Good morning. We have gone through a rough method to get W by S. What was the uh, final aim? See, we have already calculated W naught. We know how to calculate W naught by meeting all the mission requirements and taking appropriate care about fuel consumption. So, if I have selected W by S, some value, then I not I know W naught by a S is that value say A star, let's say 100 kg per meter square. And since I already know W naught from here, I get the value of S. So once I get S, the wing area, this is wing area. Then now I have to lay out that area. We have assumed some aspect ratio. So we'll say aspect ratio, let's say I have taken eight. And let's say wing area, I'm getting around 10 meters square, just a number. Then I know B square by wing area is equal to eight. So B equal to under root of eight into wing area. SW or what I, I can write SW here for clarity. So from there I get the value of span. Once I know span, I know B into C is equal to wing area. So I get the value of chord. So I get a rough idea what will be the chord. Right? If I take this number, what I get that B will be under root of 8 into 10, that is under root of 80, it would be around 9 meter roughly, span is 9 meter and 9 into C is equal to 10, implies C is equal to 10 by 9, it is around 1.1 meter or 1.2 meter roughly 1.1 or 1.2 meter. So this is 1.1 to 1.2 or 1.15 meter. So this is my typical configuration, right? You can always cross check that aspect ratio for rectangular wing will be also B by C. So B by C equal to eight, so C equal to B by eight, B is nine by eight, and nine means one, Eight one zero one point one one something like that, right? Okay. Now, after you get idea about span and chord of the wing having area, let us say which is ten meters square. There are two important tasks you have. What are those important tasks? I have got wing area is SW and just for a case I'm saying 10 meters square. I have B as 9 meter, C as 1.15 meter. So what are the two tasks required? How should my wing look like? That is, what will be the taper ratio of the wing if, if it's a low speed wing? Typically you know taper ratio CT, which is T, CT tip chord to root chord. So CT or CR, generally 0.45 to 0.5 if I keep. I'm actually trying to come closer to elliptic loop distribution so that the induced drag is reduced, right? Then you have issue about aerofoil. You may like to keep Aerofoil here and here different because you know that your aileron is here. You do not want aileron to or this area to stall without having a warning, or in a, indirectly you want this portion may stall earlier than this portion. 
So accordingly, you use aerofoil of different T by C, different camber, right? Or sometimes you may give geometric twist also, right? At the tip, I can give a little bit of negative angle so that for the particular angle when this portion stalls, this will not stall so that your aileron is effective. So all those details are required as a first step. We are talking about chord and span. The moment I put a taper ratio, the question comes, which one is the chord I will take? Because chord is varying across the span. So there, again, we have to come to the concept of mean aerodynamic chord, which we have already explained in your earlier courses. But we will be revising this little bit and do a calculation so that you understand. So this is one aspect, right? Second thing, you will also appreciate that after all, wing is a subsystem of an airplane, very important subsystem of an airplane. Right? Its primary role is to generate lift. So if I draw a fuselage and a cockpit, then the question is, where do I put this wing? Where means with respect to what? With respect to the center of gravity of the airplane. This is extremely important. How do I, and where do I install the wing? But then what are the requirements? Putting the wing. If I know that, then my answers will be simple. And which we have done in our earlier course. So to address this issue, we'll revise few things so that you immediately, you yourself know what to do and where to locate the wing. I, I'm sure you are able to guess what I'm going to talk now. We are talking about stability. Because whatever takeoff, cruise, climb, descent, loiter, whatever missions we are, required, uh, we are uh, mentioning, it has an inherent assumption that aircraft is statically and dynamically stable, right? Okay, for general low-speed aircraft. So I thought I must talk about stability. And if you recall, we, when we are discussing stability, we defined something called static stability. And how do you define static stability? It is the initial tendency of the body when, of course, disturbed from equilibrium. Initial tendency of the body when disturbed from equilibrium, what I'm saying, initial tendency of the body to come back, to come back to its equilibrium once it is disturbed from its equilibrium. That is, if I try to explain, if I take a spring and a mass system, if this is the equilibrium, and if I disturb it from equilibrium, I'm seeing here, then you see immediately the spring force acts, and it tries to push it back to the equilibrium. It's had initial tendency to push it back to the equilibrium. So once initial tendency condition is satisfied, then you say it is statically stable. Right? For an aircraft, once I'm trying to visualize through wing, and what example we gave? It was, let's say, wing and a coiled spring. So if, if this is the equilibrium, if I disturb it about its equilibrium and release it, it will again try to come back to its equilibrium. Right? So it has static stability. And message was, if you want to have static stability induced inside the aircraft, then you need to have some component 
which are aerodynamically based, influenced, which will give same action as a coiled spring. That is, if angle of attack is changed from equilibrium, the aircraft will automatically generate a nose down moment, pitching moment, right? And since I am using pitching moment, just for all of you, pitching moment we defined as if I draw an aircraft, this is just a revision so that you are ready. This is X, this is Y, this is Z. So pitching moment is the angular motion about Y axis, right? This is. And the convention buys nose up, we said positive, and nose down, we said negative. This is a convention. Right, And we also defined pitching moment coefficient, which is CM, that was pitching moment non-dimensionalized with dynamic pressure, free stream dynamic pressure, wing area, and mean aerodynamic chord of the airplane. Right. So this was the understanding of static stability, and we translated this into a neater form where we realized that if I plot CM, pitching moment coefficient versus alpha, and if the, if the variation is like this, if the variation is like this, and one variation could be like this, say so one, two, three, and we ask the question, which one depicts static stability. So for that, if I try to recollect how we analyze it was, we have to think in terms of disturbance about equilibrium. So if I take the first one, the equilibrium means where net moment and forces are zero. So this is the point. So if I disturbed about the equilibrium, let's say from here, the disturbance alpha has come, immediately this man will give a negative pitching moment so what is happening? Alpha and some angle came here, so angle of it increases, increased. So to reduce that, come back to the same alpha zero or alpha one two degrees, it will it has to generate a nose down pitching moment, but it's negative pitching moment. So this will come back to this. Reverse if it is reduced, then it is positive pitching moment will be generated. And it has always have initial tendency to come back to the equilibrium. So this variation CM versus alpha represents statically stable aircraft. Mathematically, what we say that delta CM by delta alpha, the sign should be less than zero, or in neater form we write DCM by D alpha less than zero. This was the condition for static stability. Right? Okay. Then we also are good. What about this second line? Second line says, again I check the equilibrium point is here because here CM is zero. Here I see if for some reason alpha is increased from the equilibrium, it will generate negative pitching moment. So in this case also, it has initial tendency to come back to equilibrium. From this side also same thing happens. So you say this is this equilibrium point is also having static stability. The aircraft above this equilibrium point is also statically stable, which is nothing new because we have already realized DCM by D alpha should be less than zero above that equilibrium point. So above this equilibrium point, DCM by D alpha, the slope is negative. So both are one and two are statically stable, right? But we preferred the second one. Why? Because we see that the second one, the trim is at positive angle of attack. Finally, our aim is to generate lift, and we should be balancing weight, right? Depending upon whether it is level flight or uh, maneuvering flight, you need to generate lift. So I will prefer to fly so that alpha is positive. So, so to ensure that DCM by D alpha less than zero, and also alpha is positive, we note that this intercept which I say CM naught, it should be greater than zero. 
So we put a condition that for static stability, DCM by D alpha less than zero and CM not greater than zero, this will ensure trim at positive alpha. Right? These things are clear to us. Okay? You can revise back to my course on aircraft stability and control. I think I have gone detail into it. This is what is the understanding we will be having. We need to have to go for answering this question, where do I locate my wing? Okay. Also, please remember one thing, that once I write DCM by D alpha, I can write it as DCM by DCL into 1 by uh, D, uh, I can write DCL by D alpha. Okay. Assuming everything is linear. So once I say DCM by D alpha less than zero is a condition for static stability, equivalently I can say DCM by DCL less than zero for static stability because this man is always positive. Right? That is the lift curve slope. So either I think in terms of DCM by D alpha or DCM by DCL, I should be able to get a right answer. Okay. Now, when it comes to CM naught, let us see. Our next condition is CM naught. Uh, before going to CM naught, let us little work with CM alpha. Let us say this is a wing, okay, symmetric wing. It is a symmetric wing. Right? And let us say this is the aerodynamic center of the wing. By now, you know, it will be roughly at quarter chord point. Right? We are addressing that question or revising that question. How can I get this effect, coiled spring effect, which will ensure static stability for my aircraft in flight? So we are taking an example, wing on lee. That is, it is closer to a tailless type of airplane, right? Only flying wing, right? Okay. I am taking a symmetric wing. Now, if I want to make it stable, I need to have DCM by D alpha less than zero, or equivalently DCM by DCL less than zero, right? Now, this moment, pitching moment, when I am writing, this is about which point? In free space, it is moving. So all these pitching moments are about, about CG, right? So I need to know, where is the CG? Because this CM, when I calculate, which is non-dimensionalized pitching moment, that is about the center of gravity. That matters when I'm flying the machine. So let us see, uh, first case, I put CG behind the aerodynamic center of the wing. What will happen? If I do that, that is what I am doing. If this is the AC, let's say CG is behind aerodynamic center. And you know aerodynamic center is that fictitious point about which pitching moment is independent of angle of attack, right? So suppose it is like this. I want to check whether this configuration is statically stable or not, or in expanded way, I want to check if by some disturbance the angle of attack is increased, whether there is a spring time mechanism here or not, which will try to take the aircraft nose down so the angle of attack increment is, is discouraged, right? So it has initial tendency to come back to the equilibrium. For example, meaning thereby, suppose it was flying at 5 degree, which is equilibrium, the alpha. And the disturbance came of, let's say, 0.5 degree disturbance came. So the aircraft, if it is statically stable, what it should do? Its aim should be to orient the aircraft such that its alpha equilibrium becomes 5 degree. So what it should do? It should generate a nose down moment so that minus 0.5 is there and the 
this gentleman gets corrected or it has initial tendency to correct that okay so let us see for positive delta alpha we know we can draw this delta lift is represented at aerodynamic center ideally it should be perpendicular to the velocity vector but it's very small angle so i am drawing liberty taking liberty draw it like this the message is if lift is here because ac is here this will give a nose up moment right about cg so angle of attack will further increase so it doesn't have a initial tendency to generate a negative moment so this is statically unstable so what is the message that if aerodynamic center is ahead of center of gravity then it will not be able to generate a restoring moment which is stabilizing in nature in particular static stability in context right so what is the obvious message message is okay if this is the aerodynamic center then keep the cg ahead of aerodynamic center now see what happens if i do that if there is a disturbance of positive delta alpha there is a lift delta l which will give a nose down moment like this yes indeed it will try to discourage any increment in angle of attack it is the initial tendency to come back to the equilibrium so we say this is statically stable one right so what is the message if i am designing a flying wing if i am designing a flying wing if i am to maintain dcm by d alpha less than 0 so i must ensure ac of the wing be behind cg of the flying wing right now see if i try to plot cm versus alpha for this flying wing which is symmetric air fall etc etc then if i want to plot cm versus alpha how should it look if i to see at alpha equal to 0 what will be the cm it is a symmetric air fall please understand so at alpha equal to 0 i am taking of course cg ahead cg is here and ac is here so alpha equal to 0 there won't be any lift because it's symmetric air fall so the pitching moment will be zero so cm will be zero at alpha equal to let's say positive angle right what will happen at positive angle there will be a force here lift force which will give me nose down moment so that means as angle of attack is positive the pitching moment will be negative so alpha positive pitching moment will be negative like this right similarly if alpha is negative alpha comes like this then the lift force will be acting downward which will give me a nose up pitching moment right see like this this is my ac this is my cg if negative angle of attack then the lift force will be downward and about cg it will give a nose up moment for negative you will find positive pitching moment so if i draw for this airplane it will look something like this cm versus alpha will look like this and it indeed satisfy this condition dcm by d alpha less than 0 at equilibrium equilibrium is here and the slope is negative right so now the point is we also put a second condition second condition was i should be able to ensure that alpha not equal to 0 there should be a trim point that is it should have positive alpha so that it should produce lift we are talking about symmetric aerofoil flying wing as an example you are taking right so that condition is not satisfied here because here trim is at alpha equal to 0 so for the symmetric wing flying wing it will not be able to 
generate lift at trim. So I need this should be I want to fly it, I fly a flying wing, so that the variation is something like this. Instead of this, I do not want this. Slope is okay, negative here, but it should have a CM naught greater than zero. That is the condition. So what can I do in this aerofoil or wing so that at alpha equal to zero cm naught is greater than zero. For symmetry it is not possible. The second thing comes to my mind, okay, if I make it cambered and then again here it is cg, here it is ac, at alpha equal to zero, what happens? At alpha equal to zero, you know that cl versus alpha goes like this for a cambered. So for alpha equal to zero, there will be a positive lift CL naught. So here there will be a CL naught. So that will give a negative moment about CG, right? Also, you know, for a cambered aerofoil at aerodynamic center, we have got CMAC, which is also negative by minus 0 0.02, minus 0 0.05. So what is happening if I am putting a cambered aerofoil for a flying wing at alpha equal to zero, the whole CM at alpha equal to zero will become negative. This is cambered. Again, I am not able to trim it at positive angle of attack. Yes, I can maintain the static stability by ensuring that the, the AC is behind CG. That is possible. But I want something like this. So I, I want CM at alpha equal to zero greater than zero. So what is the way? If I am using a symmetric wing, instead of making it camber like this, I do reverse. I, I make this wing like this, which is reverse of camber, and this is called reflex. Reflex wing, which is, when I say reverse of camber, you know, very limited sense, right? Instead of this, it is this. If I do this sort of aerofoil, then what happens? At alpha equal to zero, you could see there will be force here, which will give about CG a CM, which is greater than zero, isn't it? Which was not possible here, and here it was negative. So if I put a reflex aerofoil and ensure that AC is behind CG, then I can create variation of CM versus alpha like this. So now I have a trim point where alpha is positive and I can ensure lift equal to weight by choosing appropriate angle or appropriate dynamic pressure at this alpha. Okay. This was just to revise you and you will also see that uh, if you go back to my earlier lecture, how to uh, use a cambered aerofoil so that CM naught positive is obtained. For example, if I am looking for CM naught positive for a cambered aerofoil, how do I locate it? Let us say this is my cambered aerofoil and you know this is AC and here you have CMAC of the wing which is negative all the time. If I locate this AC ahead of CG, right, please understand once I am locating AC of the wing ahead of CG of the wing. In this case, there is no tail, there is no fuselage. This man is statically unstable, right? But this configuration will help you in getting CM naught greater than zero. This will say DCM by DCL is greater than zero, so not stable statically, right? But CM naught greater than zero is possible because you could see that 
if this is the AC of the wing, where you have got a CMAC, which is less than zero, and CG is here, so at alpha equal to zero, you know, there will be, because came out of oil, at alpha equal to zero, there will be CL naught, no, there will be a CL naught here, so CM at alpha equal to zero will be equal to CMAC is already there, AC wing, now plus CL naught into this distance, X bar, which is nothing but this distance divided by C. If I say this distance is X, I say X by C, right? And I'm, this, I'm measuring, this is positive, so X. So what does a CL naught into X by C plus CMAC? This will make CM at alpha equal to zero. So that will make location of X, how much gap is there that will be used, you see, to nullify the CMAC, which is always negative for a camber error foil, right? Because we want CM not be positive. So whatever negative CMAC wing is there, we'll try to see to the extent possible we marginalize this by locating appropriately the AC of the wing. Because I know uh, AC of the wing is ahead of CG, so it's statically unstable. Uh, if I'm flying a flying wing, I will simply use a flare, uh, what you call, reflex type aerofoil for a flying wing, which will be statically stable, and I can trim it also. If I want to fly a camber type of this, then of course you need to use some sort of a control system, because I understand that unstable doesn't mean uncontrollable, right? So we are not talking about that. We are trying to jump from here to an aircraft with a statement that, okay, for CM naught, I will put AC of the wing ahead of CG so that CM AC is neutralized. However, from a stability point of view, for the whole aircraft, I'll be using tail, horizontal tail stabilizer, right? To see that overall aircraft becomes statically stable, right? And that is where this is a complementary role provided to the aircraft by wing and the tail. Wing takes care of lift and tail takes care of primarily the stability, okay? And that is why the horizontal wing is called horizontal stabilizer and vertical tail is called vertical stabilizer. So next class, we'll be starting from here, right? Thank you very much.